Now, on this episode, it gets a little more interesting. We had the block machined and cleaned and got all the internals ready, like the bearings and rod bearings and piston rings. Got to assemble the crank, drop in the bearings first, of course. And yep, we go to the interesting aspect of installing the pistons and you know, talk about the piston rings. And yep, install it how everyone enjoys checking this out, right? So, you know, this is going to be technically fun and interesting. So, hey, let's go about this and let's build this all together let's go Okay, now here's the block before we took it to the machine shop. I took a few pictures just to see how the changes are after machining and all the cleanup that we're going to do. So while the block is at the machine shop, we had to complete the connecting rod bearings, main bearings, piston rings, and all the other stuff. So now the block is done from the machine shop. And after cleaning a bit, look at that. Yep, such a different piece and the clean, good looking piece, right? I mean, the block. So now... We're going to get ready to do some checkups and assemble the whole thing or the whole assembly. Sorry. All right. Yep. So now let's go with this. And now as shown earlier here, are the parts that we acquired just to complete the bottom end assembly, piston rings, rod bearings, main bearings, even thrust washers. And of course, our favorite three bond adhesive or sealant. All right, so now let's go here. Let's take a look at the block that's ready for the crank installation and of course the main bearings. Okay, here. Yep, the block is all ready and all cleaned up, right? Okay, let me clip the phone to the holder. Wait, and turn the block here to show you guys. Yep. Okay, crap, we gotta unclip the phone again. Wait, let me show you the bearing saddles. You have to double check everything, especially in this area, because there, there, there might be unusual marks or fretting, and the, you got to solve that before assembly. But this one looks really good, all right? Yep, and we install the bearings and assembly lube, and we drop in the crank. Yep. And now here, I'm going to show you before it's mated up with the main caps. Oh yeah, it's looking really good and really clean, right? Yep. All right, now before I put the main caps, here we go. One of our avid subscribers, Rene Sandoval, I'm not sure what country he's from, says, when you're putting in the crank in the block, can you show thrust washer installed, please? Definitely. Of course, we gotta comply because it's, we're all about sharing. But for the new guys, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. As you can see here, anyone that comments or asks for anything, we try to comply and give the answers as they wish. So, hey, you got to subscribe for that. And of course, old subscriber and new viewers, hit the like button because it helps spread out the video to a wider audience. And that's going to help everyone to check out the videos better, right? And of course, my favorite. The super thanks. Any extra funds that we get, we'll definitely put into more experiments and share with you guys, including dino runs. So, yep. So, now let's go with this. So, I hope, Rene, we got you good right there. All right. Here's the thrust washer. All right. Gotta open it. We gotta speed it up. There. All right. And now we take it off from the shrink wrap or the plastic. All right. There. All right. So always remember, groove side out, it heads or it faces the metal or the crank. So we push the crank there at the back. Okay, so groove side out. Some people install the thrust washer. They use assembly lube to make it stick on the side before dropping in the crank. That is fine. It's just that I've dropped it a few times and it's just a pin, you know, picking it up all the way from the floor, right? Okay, now let me unclip the phone and show you guys. Let's go, let's go. Here, you can see the thrust washer is right there. And yes, you should lubricate it. And because we slathered this with assembly lube, 
is pretty good now. So wait, I'm trying to pull it back. I'm trying to show you guys while holding the phone. So sorry if it's a bit shaky, but yeah, you know, we got to show you the details. All for Rene, right there. Groove side out, okay. Because we pulled the crank forward to the pulley side. There you go. That's it. You see the assembly loop is right there, so it's pretty well lubed. All right, yep. All right, now here, the block is all ready for the main caps. Yeah, and thrust washer is installed well, properly, of course. Okay, let's get the cam caps and torque wrench. Okay, here, I forgot to record while dropping in the main caps. So this one, the first step is 20 feet, 22 feet pounds torque. Yep. And we won't time lapse this because this one is fast. And of course, we always love hearing that click sound. Yep. You see there. Then after torquing every single means, do the first step of 22 feet pounds torque. Yep. Now we go to the second step. Yeah. And second step is 56 feet pounds torque. You can hear the click harder. Yep, it's clicking louder, right? Oh yeah. Of course, we're gonna time lapse this one because it takes longer than usual. All right, there you go. Okay, now the crank is torqued and secured. All right. Always make this a habit of checking how the crank turns freely because if there's something wrong with it, you'd catch it now while it's not too late. Well, you know, even if it's too late, you still have to disassemble it, right? So let's turn the block now. We wipe the bores. We actually sprayed WD-40 earlier on, so we wipe it with a shop towel or a paper towel. You can see it has to be clean because it's freshly honed. It's so easy to catch some flash rust. So, you know, you gotta do this over and over. And of course, with this, we gotta speed it up a little bit so it doesn't get too boring. All right. We actually checked the ring gaps and because it's honed, we got 0.016. And that's good because it's honed straight and it's proper, all right? And that's the top ring, by the way. The second ring or the scraper ring was around 0 0.018, so that's fine. Okay, now let's head to the desk and check on the pistons. All right, here is our ATF mix with engine oil, 70 to 30 ratio, all right? We use that for lubricating the piston rings upon install installation, sorry. Okay, now let's get this number one. Let's go back with the engine stand. Let's go. All right, we carefully drop in the pistons. Okay, and then tap the ring compressor so it stay flush on the deck, like, you know, like straight vertical. All right, now we tap it in. Wait, now we gotta tighten it one more click so that we're sure. All right, now we tap it in with a gentle blow. There you go, all right, there you go. Okay, now we go carefully get this. We turn the block, and of course we're gonna time lapse this because it takes a while. We put the rod caps in and lubricate the rod bolts with ERP, so it's good. Hand tight first, okay? Now let's go to the next one. Okay, so we grab number two piston now and the rod caps. Let's go, let's go. Let's go back to the engine stand. All right, here we are. Okay, we carefully drop in the number two piston. All right. Yes, and you tap the ring compressor so that it's flush by the deck or on the deck, all right? Now we tap it easy. Wait, sorry, one more click on the torque or on the ratchet, all right? There, and we tap it easy. All right, there, all right. Okay, now we're gonna time lapse when we install the rod cap because it takes a little while, all right. There you go, we lubricate it with the ERP assembly lube. There you go, now let's go to number three. Back to the workbench, we grab this, number three, and then once again, back to the engine stand. Okay, here we go. Okay, we carefully tap the ring compressor you know, flat to the deck. All right, there you go. And then you just check with the torque handle for one more click. Oh, there, it clicked. Okay, now let's try. There you go. 
easy, right? Okay, now we time lapse once again for the rod caps, all right? We lubricated the ARP, of course, once again, because that has ARP rod balls, right? Now, we grab number four, last of the Mohicans, all right? Now, once again, back to the engine stand, all right? We drop it in carefully, all right? Of course, tap the ring compressor so it's flush. And we try to see if it's gonna click one more to tighten it. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's try. It's gonna click. Wait. Wait, let me check. Okay, no, it's not clicking anymore. All right. So now let's tap it in. Oh, there. Oh, easy. Okay, now, uh, once again, time lasts for the rod caps. Let's go, let's go. All right, here we go. We lubricate it, and so we're gonna stretch it a little later. Well, okay, now we can go. Here we are now. We uh, loosen the rod bolts. Now we check with the stretch gauge to see it zeroed out. Okay, we adjust this so it's zeroed out. Okay, let me, let me show you guys. All right, here you go. Wait, let's try to zoom in. Let's get it focused. There, it's zero, right? And that's, the rod bolts are loose, so let's clip this back in here. Okay, now we torque this to an eight feet pounds torque as suggested by ERP. Okay, and remember, this is a well lubed rod bolts, so you will get the necessary stretch possible. All right, there you go. Okay, now let's check this. Clip it there. Oh, great. Look, look at this. Look at this. They, rec they suggest 0055. So there you go. It's 55. Perfect. Wait, let's try to zoom it. Focus. There, it's perfect. All right. So now we do the rest. And we didn't get to record this because, you know, there are times I forget to press the record button on the phone. So, yep. Okay, now here we go. We turn the crank now because it's all done and ready. It's I like turning this like this because you can actually literally hear the piston rings traveling through the bore. Oh, this is going to be a good performing engine. Okay, let's turn it here. Let's show you. Yep, one of pistons indeed. And mind you, this this has been this pistons has been running for five years, and now we're just rebuilding it. You know, we we just might as well slap on new rings for it because it's still, it's still good though the old rings. But hey, it's a rebuild, so everything has to be new. All right, let me show you something here. Okay. Later on, once the engine is finished, we're gonna remove both of these for a breather so that you know the crankcase pressures are pretty good and you see we remove this so it's the oil tunnels are totally clean that's how we do this and here it is already yep the bottom end is now all good and ready to rumble yeah and now, cool story here. Matthew, a guy from Jamaica, I talked to through the SRD page on in Facebook, our shop page. We frequently talk about ideas and plans and all the stuff that is, you know, on his project. And he messaged me lately and said this. And that's because he's running one up pistons on his setup that is Skunk 2 Tuner 2 cams, Skunk 2 Ultra Street intake manifold, and a 1320 side exit header. And made this much. Look at this. He made 290 wheel horsepower and 200 feet pounds torque on one up pistons. And that's on methanol and 40% nitro. But still, that's crazy. It held up that much. Props to Al Franklin, who runs, who originated, and the original maker of One Up Pistons. That's crazy. Yep, this is a good job indeed for Matthew from Jamaica. And I asked Matthew, even the head is just locally ported by them. So that's crazy good job. I tip my hat to you guys. That's a job well done. All right. So now the next thing we got to do now is before we 
finish the engine, we're going to actually degree the GSR B18C1 cam so that we can actually compare it to this video. Remember this with the CTR and the B16A cams comparison? And of course, instead of clicking up here, it'll be in the description below. So when you think about it, you got to subscribe because, hey, when it's all done, the video, I mean, you can click here for that.